Good evening. Welcome back to Cooking with Donna. Um, today, I have something that somebody, or actually a lot of people are requesting me to make these. They're something we like to call around my house. Um, we call them garlic balls. Um, they're similar to a piece of garlic bread that you get in these restaurants with, you know, your, your meals. But they're balls, and they're, they're made up uh, from your basic bread, your homemade bread that you make. Uh, if you've never made any, give it a try. Uh, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to turn my homemade bread into little balls. And they have Parmesan cheese all over them, parsley, oil, garlic, crushed pepper. They are really delicious. So let's get started. So first off, I need some warm water. Okay, first off, I'm going to give me a half a cup of warm water here. You don't want... Um, really hot water just basically warm water make sure the the water like i said is not real hot you just want it warm we're gonna dissolve two packages of yeast here i like to use the rapid rise it's just faster if you have regular that's that will work fine as well so let's get these in there i like to use two packs gives that bread a better for me a better texture and uh I just like it. I like that yeast flavor to my bread when I'm eating it. Normally a lot of them will call for one packet and I just don't, that's my preference. I like two of them so. What we're going to do is get this dissolved in here. Two packs of yeast and a half a cup of warm water. So we're going to let this get all dissolved in here. I want to get this all dissolved. And I like to let mine set for a little bit, even though it is rapid rise. You don't have to, but I like to let it poof a little bit. So I'm going to add some sugar in here. Sugar feeds, it, the yeast feeds on this, so we're going to add the sugar. And I'm adding two tablespoons of sugar to this. Just drizzle a little bit. Feed that yeast a little bit there. And we're going to let that set just for a few minutes. Let it do a little bit of magic in there and... We'll get started on some other stuff. Meanwhile, I'm going to clean up here. All right, I'm going to get two more cups of warm water in there. Two more cups of warm water. Like I said, make sure it's not too hot. You don't want a bunch of hot water in there. Just some warm water. Okay. And I am going to add a tablespoon and a half of salt. I'm going to add two tablespoons of canola oil. Vegetable oil works just as well. Corn oil, whatever one you prefer. And we're going to get this mixed up until we get that salt all dissolved in there. Whisking it up. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do is add some flour, bread flour. I like to use bread flour because of the protein levels that are in it. But um, it, it's better for baking bread flour. I'm going to start out with three cups of flour. Level that off. Don't pack your flour. Three cups of flour. And what I'm going to do here, now if you have a beater, by all means, use it. Um, I have one, but this is just me. I have always done bread this way. Mama's always done it this way. We didn't have those big old machines back then. We used our hands, and, you know, it, it, it just tastes better if you got your hands in there, right? So, but anyway, the, 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 there's nothing wrong with those. I just, this is how I've always done it. It's just easier for me to just have to clean this instead of, you know, getting out that big old machine and letting it do the work for me. I'd just rather do it myself. But what I'm here, what I'm doing here is I'm creating texture for my bread. So this is an important step. Don't skip it. And then we'll add some more flour in here. But I'm going to, I'm going to stir this up maybe a couple of minutes just to start working on my, my texture on my bread. This is where it starts right here. So don't, like I said, don't skip this part. Okay. All right. I got that beat up for a couple of minutes. 
Um, now I'm going to add some bread flour to it. And what I like to do is just sprinkle it over top. Clean hands. And I like to use my hand as a little whisk. That way I can feel the consistency of what I'm working with here. That whisk not really allowing me to do that. So putting your hands in there just makes it taste better, don't it? Well, I know a lot of us cooks feel that way about it. But um, I'm probably going to use about... Hmm, probably six to seven cups of flour in all including the three that I just started with probably going to need a couple more cups to this here we'll see where where we're at here in a little bit but the dough is going to be a little bit sticky at the end but you want it like that because you're going to work some more flour in it so you're just going to slowly add the flour you don't want to just dump all six cups or the remainder of the three and a half four cups in here that way you know where you're at because if the flour is dry you're going to need more so we're getting there all right i got this out of the bowl now it's still a little bit sticky but like i said you don't want it um you don't want it real dry you can see how it's kind of sticking there but once you keep kneading it it's going to get drier and drier now this is an important step here you do need to knead this a good 10 15 minutes or so because this is what's gonna give you that texture that good chew of the bread without it you're gonna have nothing but a bunch of crumbs and you don't want that you want good bread so do not skip this part y'all this is where that good old dough hook comes in hand but I ain't gonna bother with that. This is the way my mama did it. This is the way I'm gonna do it. So I'm gonna sit here and knead and knead and knead and we'll be back in a minute. I don't think y'all wanna sit here and watch me knead this for 10 minutes, do you? No. All right, we got it smooth as a baby's bottom here. I got this kneaded all up here. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is put this in a very well oiled bowl. Put that down in there. I like to oil the top of it. Prevents it from drying out. Get that on there. Now what I like to do is cover it with some uh, some parchment paper. I like to use that press and seal stuff. That stuff does wonders. I'm always fighting with that. Uh, always fighting with the saran wrap. This one's a lot easier. I like it, but either one will work. So, I'm going to put this on top here. And I ended up using like, I think it was like maybe six and a quarter cups. It just depends on your your flour, how much you'll need. But you basically seen that the texture, the consistency of it that you're looking for. You don't want it real sticky. And as long as it ain't sticking to your fingers... And you don't want a brick of dough, so don't go overboard adding flour to it. It's usually between six to seven, six, six, six and a half, seven cups of flour to two and a half cups of water. I like to cover it with this, like I said, the, the press and seal. And then after I put this on there, I like to cover it with a towel. And let your, if your house is kind of cool and AC is well. I don't know if a lot of people have their ACs on right now, but let me tell you, mine's on because I'm in Texas, honey, and it's 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 hot here. But anyway, um, find the warmest place you can in the in the house, even if it's inside your oven with the oven off, of course, and let this rise for at least an hour and a half to, till double in bulk. Let let it, let it rise, and once it rises, we'll punch it down and let it rise a few more minutes after that, and. We will get started on them garlic balls. We'll be back in a little bit, y'all. All right. This is, should be... I let it rise for maybe an uh, hour, hour and a half. Maybe. Yeah, probably about an hour and a half. Then I punched it down and let it rise again. And it rose again maybe eh, 15, 20 minutes or so. Just another quick little rise for it. 
And now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to shape these into little balls. They're not going to be that big at all. It, this takes some time, but let me tell you, they are really good. It's um, maybe so big. They're not that big. Maybe an inch or so. Curtis, wouldn't you say about that size? About mm -hmm. an inch or so? Mm-hmm. And you're going to also place them, give them some room because these are going to rise. They're going to expand. So maybe do three across or so on a cookie sheet there like I'm using foiled. Yeah, maybe an inch and a half or so apart. Two inches. And you're going to do this. But like I said, don't make them real big. You don't want real big ones. But anyway, they're, they're not real big at all. You can see how, how they are. They're small, like I said. Inch and a half space them both ways. And um, but these are these are really good guys. Uh, I'm gonna roll up all these balls here and uh, we're gonna coat them when they're done. They're gonna do a rise, maybe 20 minute rise on this cookie sheet here. And uh, these little things, let me tell you guys, they're addicting. We like them around here just as a snack or they're really good with spaghetti or lasagna or some soups. You know, they're really good. But they are addicting. We like to just sit around and watch TV and grab them as a snack and have some soda, a cup of soda with them or something. But they're addicting. So if you're watching your carbs, it'll limit yourself. Because once you eat one, they're like, they say you can't just eat one. You're going to keep popping them in your mouth. But let me get all these rolled up, guys. And um, I'm going to cover these with... Uh, my little dish towels this time. I don't want the saran wrap. I'm just going to cover them with one of the towels, each one of them, and put them in a warm place again. Let them rise for maybe 20 minutes to a half hour. And I'm going to preheat my oven to 400 degrees, 4, 425, and put them in the middle rack, not too far on the top or the bottom. Just put them right in the middle. And these are not going to cook very long, but let me get them rolled up, and we'll come back with some more information in a minute. Be right back. All right, these have been rising now for about... A half hour or so I don't know if I brought that up in the beginning lightly oil or lightly spray your foil here uh, from prevent them from sticking there and I, another thing I don't know if I brought up either you're gonna want some garlic powder some salt uh, some Parmesan some crushed pepper some oregano some parsley and you're gonna need some oil so if you want to start gathering that stuff if you're gonna make them make sure you have it I'm sorry I should have brought that up in the beginning but, um, and if, and if you don't want to make the bread yourself, by all means, you can buy, you know, the bread that comes at your local supermarket there in the frozen section. You can buy, uh, already, uh, frozen bread there. And, and you can make this same product here with the frozen bread. It's not going to be as good. I mean, there ain't really much, anything better than something that, you know, that's homemade. So, um, I'm going to get these in the oven at, uh, 425. And I'm going to bake them. And make sure your oven is preheated. You want that oven hot for these. Because when they're done, don't let it fool you that you see you still see they're a little bit white. Because the bottom of them are going to get golden brown. So that's your browning is the bottom. Because if you try to turn your broil on and lightly brown them on top, you can do that. But you got to get used to where you're at here with them. Because you can very quickly over bake them. And you don't want that because then they're going to be hard. So these are still going to be white. The bottoms will be brown. And then once you get your spices and everything on them, you know, you're going to, you'll, you'll, you just don't, don't over bake them that, you know, but you, if they're white, they're still white, that's fine. But they're going to bake probably approximate, maybe 10 minutes tops until you see the bottom of them are golden brown. They're done. Good. Okay. So let's get them in the oven and we'll be back to put our goodness on these little suckers. All right. Okay, I've taken these out. I'm going to get these poured in here. I need some bigger trays because these things take some time, but let me tell you, they're worth it. Okay, I got those all in the bowl there. Now what you're going to do is while they're warm, drizzle your oil over them. Now, I don't measure. This is something I've never done, but you want to... Toss these. You may think that's a lot of oil, but remember, you're not the one eating them all. You're going to share. I'm going to toss them in the oil, and we're going to be using some 
Very little oregano. I guess it's a preference. It depends on you. Not a whole lot. We're going to be using some garlic powder. Just going to shake those up. Now, on the garlic powder, these are garlic balls, so you want a lot of garlic. You want a lot of garlic. And, and just go back and forth tasting them, you know what I mean? And I don't like to use garlic salt because I want a lot of garlic. Garlic salt will get too heavy, so I control my salt, okay? So I'm going to put some salt, shake them up, okay? We have some parsley. Shake them up. Okay. We have some Parmesan cheese. Yummy, yummy, yummy. And a lot of times, if I'm not feeling the Parmesan, I'll leave it out. So there's some Parmesan. And here is the good stuff. Red crushed pepper. Now, if you don't like spicy, eat them as they are. Eat them as they are. And you're going to test them as you're going. Get them all stirred up after you have all your spices in there. And then drizzle them with some crushed pepper. We got some good old crushed pepper in there. That's going to make them a little bit spicy. We like them spicy here, and we'll just sit down and, you know, on the tube, sit there and watch TV and pig out on these things. The next thing you know, it's like, where did the garlic balls go? And this bowl will be full, and, and they're gone. So if anybody out there is watching their diet, I'm telling you, you're not going to just eat one of these. They are really, really good. So we'll get them in, in a bowl here. and um, But really, y'all give these a try. I guarantee you, you will love them. If you like them, give me a, a like. Subscribe, please. But these are my spicy garlic balls. Curtis, try one. I got my son over here as the guinea pig. <laughs> Don't even go there. <laughs> You're very good. Huh? They're really good. Are they good? They got enough salt? Mm-hmm. Okay, y'all. There they are. Spicy garlic balls. Give them a try and please subscribe and like. Until next time, we will see you guys later and I hope you enjoy them if you give them a try. God bless.